Hey everybody, welcome to the Soulful Eclectic. I am your host, Diana Collins, and I want to welcome you to today's episode. If this is the first time you're joining us, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome, welcome, welcome. I totally appreciate you and your time. If you are returning, thank you so much for taking the time to come back. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you so much. So for my WUBI listeners, I want to thank my WUBI Ubiquity Radio family for having me as one of your podcasts on our station. It is a family. I love you all. And I can't wait until we can get together and celebrate all the greatness that we are doing. And all the new, all the shows that we have that are on WUBI. Guys, if you have not gone on to WUBI.live, Please do. Please download the app. Please subscribe, like, you name it, share it. Even if it's not for you, share it for some to somebody else because somebody else can be a blessing to something that we are delivering on the station. And one of the things that um, <clears throat> I wanted to share is that for those of you who are out there are creatives, please reach out and let us know. You can reach out to me, anyone on any of these shows. We have our websites up there. Our email addresses are, are up there. Please reach out to us. Go on wubi.live and, you know, send a message, whatever. But let us know because this is a station for friends, family, unity, and we want to lift up our community. And so in doing that, we are here to uplift you, you know, just like we're uplifting each other. So please reach out, let us know what we can do to help you out. So for those of you who are avid listeners to my show, The Soulful Eclectic, or if you're new, listen to the show, you're catching it on the radio. Thank you so much again. But also I have a blog for writers, uh, definitely reach out to me and I can post your stuff up on the blog. Right now, it's just my stuff going up on the blog, which is great, but I like for the rest of the community to join in. I know I have a bunch of writers out there. Um, a couple of them in the next season I'll be talking to, so you get some new faces, some new music from us in the community. I'm out in Tucson, Arizona, so um, there's a whole community out here I'm going to introduce you to as I meet them because I'm getting to know that community as well. So I'm going to be sharing that coming in the next few weeks for the new year. Uh, but this episode is actually going to be my closing episode for season five, right? So we're going into season six, guys. Can you believe it? Season six, you guys hung in there with me. I so appreciate you. And I can't wait to hear from my listeners from around the world, from WUBI Radio and Roku TV. And I didn't mention that. I, I mean, I mentioned it probably a couple of episodes ago. But um, just to reiterate, because it's nothing wrong with re reiterating information, right? So um, WUBI, Ubiquity Radio, has also a TV station, people. So if you have films... Uh, ideas that you want to get out there, please reach out to um, our station owner, DJ Balo, or any one of the WUBI Ubiquity Radio family. Um, we can definitely pass on the message and share that information with everyone out there. So for the next couple of weeks, you guys are going to probably hear some old shows, which is great because that's still great information that I want to get out there to you guys. So please do um, chime in and listen to those uh, repeated. For some, it's repeated. For others, it's new information. So I hate to say it's repeats, but you know what? There's nothing wrong with repeat. We repeat every time we take an order from a doctor. So make sure we got that stuff right. So get it together. It's okay. You might have missed something the first go round, and now here you go. You got it back in. All right. So, um, so yeah, so you'll be hearing some of those uh, replayed shows, which is great because it gets you ca caught up with a lot of things, and um, it gives me that that break for the holiday as we start to transition into season six. And with me joining WUBI Ubiquity Radio and the live station on Roku, this gives me the opportunity to change some things and revamp some things yet again because. You know, every time you come on, every time you do a show, every time you have a new season, you want to revamp. You want to be better. You want to you want to give you new stuff and 
reiterate some of the great stuff that was old, but it's still relevant. Whatever it is, you want to just continue to get better and better for you. So anytime that you guys have suggestions for us to be better and to do better, please reach out and let us know. But as we're closing in on um, this season, I am not only changing up the podcast a little bit, but I'm also, like I said, introducing you to a new community that's new to me, not new to anybody else, but new to me, um, my new community that I've come to learn about here in Tucson. Um, I want, and I'm excited. Oh my gosh. I'm excited for these people. Um, because they are great creatives and I'm always about celebrating anyone who's being creative and anyone who's living their authentic self and the things that I have for you guys next season. I'm just mind blown. I just want to give it to you all in this season, but I, I know I should spread it out and share it out and give it a chill. So, um, definitely going to hold out on some of that greatness, but it's going to be coming. You guys are going to see it. But also, um, I'm going to be revamping my other businesses too, guys. So, you know, I have Divine Nubian Essentials and um, I'm loving the skin I am in. My skin has never been so healthy, so fresh, and it's only been using these products, no chemicals. I'm just loving the skin I'm in. So, uh, Divine Nubian Essentials is, you know, we're not doing a reface, we're just you know, figuring it out and getting and being better and doing better. That's what we're doing. So nothing of the product is changing. Um, it's just, I guess, like I said, getting better. It's just getting better. And that's all I can do because I want to continue to do better and bring better products out for the community. And so that we can continue to take care of ourselves because our skin is our biggest organ. And if something breaks down on that and allows an invading bacteria to go in we're for those of us who have low immunities we're screwed right so <laughs> there we are um it's just it is what it is if you got skin you're in okay so let's not get it twisted it, yes i'm taking care of my brothers and sisters in the brown black and brown community but at the end of the day if you have skin this product is for you Plain and simple. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to like beat around the bush and, you know, pussyfoot around the issue. It is what it is. If you got skin, you're in. If you want to be bougie and don't want to buy it because it's made by a black woman, that's your business. As uh, Auntie Pamela says, that's your business and you can do what you want, okay? Um, but I'm just going to be 100 with it because that's all I know how to do. Um, so yeah, so, uh, Divine Nubian Essentials, who is one of our sponsors, is going to be revamping along with Collins Education Resource Management. Um, look for some things coming down the line for the students. Also with Divine Nubian Essentials, some workshops for our students who are looking to go into healthcare fields. The, they are doing workshops, they are doing mentorships, they are doing, um, tutoring sessions and also speaking out in the community. So definitely Collins, ERM.com. If you are looking for a viable healthcare speaker who is out to advocate for you and the equity and inclusion of healthcare and just being all together well within yourselves and learning how to take care, better care of ourselves, right? Because if we don't do it, nobody else will. So yeah, so it's just so many, 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 many things. And as you guys can see, I am starting to feel better a little bit. Um, I still have a little bit of dryness from having this cough and, and being ill and whatever. But um, yes, I am taking care of myself and it is getting better. So thank you for those who have reached out and asked if I'm feeling okay because you heard the episode and it was like, oh, your voice sounded a little rough. Um, because it was a rough, honestly, it really was rough because I, um, had the worst sinus infection I have had in a very long time. And so, um, my, my body took a toll, but anyways, as we are navigating to the close of this season, and as you guys know, I started out the month with new month kind of things. And as we're closing this month, um, I'm not going <sighs> to... 
it's one of these things that I just I'm trying really hard not to go into anything new because I'm just really excited uh, but I, I won't go into anything new but it's just one of these things where I just want us to really really sit down and think about everybody's into the New Year's resolutions right I had it, I'm gonna get fit I'm gonna go join the gym and I'm like I'm like no let's let's not do that to ourselves because it it's to me I feel like it's self-sabotaging when you start thinking about how you're going to be joining a gym and all of a sudden for the new year I'm going to get fit if if that's what you're going to do you're going to start it either today or never because it's not going to be sustainable so if you're saying I'm going to get fit and I'm going to start today then make it today not oh I'm going to start Monday at 9 a.m. and I'm going to join a gym don't do it. You're setting yourself up for failure. Start in little increments, even if it's just you walking around the block, you know, on the phone, having a conversation. You're walking, you're moving, not just your mouth, but your body. And so that's a good thing. All right. But um, I know we're, like I said, we're coming up on the new year and everybody wants to is going to have these new year's resolutions. I'm going to go on a diet. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to do better. How about we start taking care of ourselves mentally? Because once we start taking care of ourselves mentally, the physical will start to happen. Um, because sickness happens with the mind, body, and the soul. And it, it, it people don't, I don't, I don't want to say people don't know. People don't remember. People forget. We get busy that if your mind is not right, it soon affects the body, right? So a lot of people are on this the journey of self-discovery, self-healing, especially those of us who have um, childhood traumas that we're healing from, uh, issues in the family that we're trying to set boundaries with. There's a lot of boundary setting, uh, healing going on. There's a lot of people who are doing some spiritual work, some shadow work. If you never heard of shadow work, it's great to start that whole healing process for yourself. Um, it leads into you learning how to set those boundaries within your family because family is the hardest thing for us to set boundaries for people. Um, let's just face it because we grew up saying your family is your family. You can't change that. You love your family for whoever they are and that's it. But the truth of the matter is, yeah, we can love our family, but we can love them from a distance and we can have them in small increments at our own choice, at our own choice because our families can be toxic. Yes, our families can be toxic and I know it's hard for everyone to hear because it's like, no, that's my dad, that's my mom, you know, I, I have to love them. Yeah, you, you, you know what, you can love them, but you don't have to like them and you can not, and you can love them from a distance. You don't have to have them in your life, in your corner for every, everything. Um, so, you know, you start to learn what your limitations will be or can be with your family and you can set limitations with your family. How my own daughter set limitations with me. Um, so let's face it because she has her own things that she's healing with my oldest daughter, um, is you got, this, she has her things that she's healing from. Excuse me. And sometimes some, and some of them, some of it has to do with me and face it. We are not perfect parents. We're not perfect people. So therefore, you know, she has to figure out how she's going to move on from that. So yeah, she has set boundaries with me and, and we talked about it and I said, yeah, do what you need to do. I'm not going to stop you from your growth because at the end of the day, you have to live your life. You're living your life and building yourself for you and your future family. I'm now considered your extended family. I just want to make sure you're taking care of you. And if you feel like separating and getting yourself and doing your time away from myself and whomever, so be it. Do you, boo? I just want you to be okay. That's, that's it. And that's, and that's the realness. Okay. I don't want to be that, that overbearing mom that's going to keep trying, keep trying. I'm like, nah, I'm going to be here for you. Let me know when you're ready. And, and that's what you do. And I had to learn that, right? I had to learn that. But yes, as I was saying, um, I didn't mean to go on a tangent about me, but, um, it just happens that way because again, I, I am true, you know, authentic to who I am and I'm, honest and transparent to a fault on a lot of things so therefore I do share but through my sharing I'm hoping something that I share resonates with someone um, and you can pick up a tidbit or some pearls of wisdom that I may lay down 
um, and apply it to your life or build upon it and whatever, use it, whatever. I'm all about sharing and giving information so we all can grow. We can, all can be better because um, that's the teacher in me. The master has failed more often than the student has tried. There's a lot of things that I have failed at before I became a master at any of the one things that I do. Um, and I'm, I am, as we were talking this weekend, yesterday with um, my financial person, is that um, I'm a Jill of all trades. Um, and I'm not going to say I have, I'm a master of none. I'm a master of some. I am a master of some. And so therefore I can claim mastery through failure. Um, and that's okay. We have to fail at some things before we become a master because you can't claim to be a master without failing at something. So you got people who can and, and they do. I, I, hey, that's their business. I'm going to tell you my philosophy you cannot be a master completely without having to fail at something because in order for you to be a master at it, you have to know how to overcome failure. And if you claim or you say you've never failed, then how can you truly claim mastery of something? Um, that's just me in my Bruce Lee philosophical Confucius moment. <laughs> right? Anyways, um... Again, I go off on a tangent. You guys follow my thought process and I appreciate you completely. Um, so right now, like I said, we're all on this like trail of self healing and self discovery. And today I came upon this, um, I want to say it's a self discovery poem by Oriah Mountain Dreamer. And that's Oriah Mountain Dreamer. And um, it's kind of a long poem. I probably won't go through the whole thing. But um, there's just the way it started really resonated with me. And I just want to share it with you. And I'm going to put it on my blog so you guys can read it as well. Um, but I just want to talk about just some pieces and break it down just a little bit. And it's called The Invitation. So, it, it, and I liked it because just the first part of it really interests me. So the first part of it is it doesn't interest me what you do for a living, which is really true for me. I don't care what you do for a living. And it really bothers me that what I do for a living matters to you. I can't tell you how many times I've been in the room with individuals and until I gave them my resume or they heard about my resume or someone who knew me recited my resume and the things that I've done that they wanted to come and speak to me. But before that, they ignored me for, you know, several minutes to hours in this e in, an, in an event or a moment. But as soon as they heard certain pieces of my resume, then I became an, of interest to them. And now at that point, you are no longer or you're not of interest to me because you didn't see the value of me before you heard my resume. But anyways, it doesn't interest me what you do for a living. I want to know what you ache for. And if you did a dream of meeting your heart's longing, say word, okay? That's what I'm saying. I want to know you in depth. I want to know what is what drives you. you. When I met my husband, that that was it. We talked for hours. And it wasn't about trivial things about who the Kardashians are doing, and Kim, what, you know, whomever what I was gonna say Kim West Kardashian what I meant to say was Kanye West and you know the Kardashians but anyway but I, I guess she is Kim West right because they did get married and get divorced but anyways uh again my trivia mind uh but yes you know we talked about things that you know were important and coming here we are on our seven year winter solstice anniversary because we got married on a summer solstice and the winter solstice so yesterday was our winter solstice anniversary and it, it's one of those things that we we sit down and we reconnect and say hey I want to know what about you has changed and I know we talked about this in earlier episodes but you have to kind of check in with your spouse and so I I, I also do this with my friends too it's like I, I yeah, I know what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and I, I get it, but what drives you? What do you ache for? What do you long for? What is, what, what is your passion and how do you, how do you sustain that passion and 
as me, as your friend, as your wife, as your, your sister, your brother, how can I help you sustain in that passion? What do you need from me as your friend, as your spouse, as your sister, brother, cousin? What do you need from me that can help you sustain, help you build that ache that's within you, your dream? What are you dreaming about? You know, what are you, what are your goals five years from now? If, if this is not a conversation that is happening in your circle, then I'm going to have to say, maybe you need to change your circles and grow a little bit, because honestly, this is a conversations that we as growing individuals who are evolving should be having. You want to surround yourself with people who are, I, I don't want to say who are, are like-minded because people who are, who are of different mindsets than you help you grow and evolve um, individuals of different ages I think I said this too in a podcast you you want to have friends of different age groups because it keeps you in touch and it helps you grow and it helps that person grow too from seeing different perspectives right so it's just those things again what do you ache for what, what what's your dream you know I, what is your heart's longing? Does anyone ever ask you that? I'm asking you, what is your heart's longing? Sit down right now at this minute. If you need to hit pause, hit the pause because you know I'm all about the pause, right? So hit the pause for just a moment, if you will, and then just sit there and ask yourself about this first part of this, this poem. It doesn't interest me what you do for a living. I want to know what you ache for and if you dare to dream of meeting your heart's longing. That is the first part of this whole poem. I want you to sit down and really think about that. Write it down. A lot of us have vision boards. A lot of us have vision books. A lot of us have dream books, goal books. We have books for everything. I know I got notebooks all over this damn house. We have books. Write it down. Because once you start writing it, you start to feel it. Once you say it, it becomes a part of you. That You know that whole chakra alignment. I know everyone is all about the I am, I am. That's the root. Okay, now you, you, you've planted that root, right? Now, do you feel it? Do you believe it? Do you speak it? Do you think it? Do you see it? Do you live it as much as you can? Don't go out here and like spit it up all your credit cards and clean out your bank account because you want to live like you Kim Kardashian. That don't work. Okay, we got to gotta scale that, that living part back. But you know what I mean. <laughs> Within our mindset within our re within reason are you living the life that you feel that you are rooted in and and that's it and, and it's great to have again i am affirmations but that's just solidifying your root planting those roots now that you got those roots planted you got to start start feeding it start feeding it right and that's feeding it is thinking it believing it speaking it feeling it, right? You got to feel it and believe it. So that's the first part of that. Okay. Now let's move on to the second part of it. The second part of it is it doesn't interest me how old you are. Thank you. Right? Because I know everybody's already just like age is just a number. In theory, yes. Okay. Because I don't want nobody out here cause going out here doing no statutory rape and, you know, all these things that you think you want to be of a consenting adult age. Let's just let's just go there. OK, you want to be a consenting adult age. And I know everybody has their mixed feelings about individuals dating younger people. Um, men have been dating younger women for ages. And as soon as women do it, we get called cougars and all these kind of things. And um, I'm going to tell you now. You don't get a bad decision. You call me a gosh darn a cougar, okay? I'm just letting you know. I'm just gonna, it's gonna, those are fighting words, and I, and that's okay because I don't claim that. But you know, in all in all honesty, <laughs> I know it's gonna sound bad, but 
Um, <clears throat> I have been called that, but here's the thing. I started, I, in the beginning, I used to get really upset about it. I was like, how the hell? You know, I, I said more choice words than hell. But um, anyways, I said, how the hell are you going to call me a freaking cougar? And men have been doing this for eons. Okay, eons. Uh, I mean, shit. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go there. I was going to say, yeah, like R. Kelly and all this other shit and many other people. But needless to say, um, I, men have been doing this for years. And here's the thing. Um, the individuals are of consenting age. Like I said, it doesn't matter. Why does it that it's okay for call women out of their names? And I understand some women have embraced this cougar mentality and the kudos to them. But I used to get upset about it. I no longer get upset about it. I used to say it's fighting words. And, you know, I, I had to start changing my mindset about that. Because, like I, like I just said, I, I was ready to fight somebody who called me a cougar. And right now, it's like, you know what? No, I don't I don't claim that. But if that's how you feel, that's how you see you one day, that's your business. But that's not how I see myself. It's like using the N-word, right? I don't see myself as an ignorant individual, so therefore, who who are you talking to? Because it will be yourself because you're the one who's using that terminology, you know. So, be that as it may, um, I digress. But yes, it doesn't matter. It doesn't interest me. Excuse me, how old you are. It doesn't. What interests me is your mind, right? How do you think? How do you process? How do you see things? How do you see the world? How do you see yourself? Remember I said, if you're not having these conversations in your group of friends, then you're, how, you're not really evolving. Because honestly, I'm going to tell you, when I get together with my group of friends, we're not talking about the movie stars, their lives, how Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. That That's just, you know, it's one of those things... <laughs> I like to say, it gets an honorable mention and then we move on, okay? To be honest, it gets an honorable mention of any value and then we move on, especially for those of us who are in the film industry. We do talk about this because it is relevant to us, but we don't dive deep into the whole issue. We give it an honorable mention, give it its due diligence, and we move on. It's not the whole crux of our conversation. So... In our age group, I told, in our group, we have various ages, which I say age doesn't matter. It's what you bring to the table. What you're, And what I mean what you bring to the table is your mind. Where is your mindset? Which is how I, you know, got to meet my husband because I didn't look at his 27 years at the time for age. Excuse me, guys. Um, I looked at his mindset and who he was as an individual and what he could bring to the table as a grown man because that's who he is. Um, so yes, that's, that's what it means to me when it says it doesn't interest me how old you are. Okay, so the next part of this is this. I want to know if you will risk looking like a fool for love, for your dreams, for the adventure of being alive. Say word, say again, say again, <laughs> right? I wanna know if you will risk looking like a fool for love, for your dream, for the adventure of being alive. That's living your authentic self. That's being your authentic self because you don't care what the other person thinks because your goal is to fall in love and be in love and show that person you love them. Your goal is to dream, live that dream, be that dream, make that dream into a reality, right? Your, your, your goal is to be alive and to live. So, of course... Of course, that's being your authentic self. So again, I'm going to repeat that second part. It doesn't interest me how old you are. I want to know if you will risk looking like a fool for love, for your dream, for the adventure of being alive. Now, again, here we are. I want you to do the same thing we did to that first verse. I want you to sit there and take a pause. 
a serious pause. All right. Now, in that pause, I want you to sit down and really think about that verse that I just read. It doesn't interest me how old you are. I want to know if you will risk looking like a fool for love, for your dream, for the adventure of being alive. Now, sit down and think about that. Write it down and answer that question. And answer, have you ever looked like a fool for love? And I don't mean just chasing somebody because they, you know, they they stop talking. I, I want to know, have you ever really, like, the whole say anything, got the radio outside the, the door, kind of look like a fool for love kind of thing. And for your dreams, have you really sat down and thought about your dreams? And are you really the real ready to risk looking like a complete idiot because everyone else doesn't believe in your dream but you believe in your dream and you want to see it happen and you know it can happen you know and then it's just just I, as i said for the very adventure of being alive being alive is amazing every day i tell every every day that you are breathing that you wake up and God gives you the ability to wake up and breathe and move and talk and think and you know walk and eat and all these things that is a new day of you living and being alive the day that stops the day that stops is the day you die and you don't get that opportunity again so are you are you Looking like a fool for adventure of being alive. All right. So that's your pause moment, guys. Take a pause. Think about it. Write it down. Answer the question. Okay. Now. The third part. And like I said, I don't think we're going to get through all these parts because there's a lot of parts to this. But I'll put it up anyways. Um. So the third part of this is it doesn't interest me what planets are squaring your moon because <laughs> that's a real thing, right? So it doesn't interest me what planets are squaring your moon. And I say that and I chuckle because I just had a conversation the other day with uh, friends of mine and we were talking about, you know, you're a Gemini, your Scorpio moon, rising moon, and your or moon and your uh, Virgo sun, and all these pieces. So she started breaking down my whole zodiac, and so that's what that squaring uh, planets of your moon means. It's like, are you a Gemini, and a you know you are got a Scorpio moon with a either Capricorn sun or some you know, whatever. And it's all based on your, your zodiac, um, and the time you were born and on those things. So that's what that means when it says squaring your moon. And it says also here, I want to know if you have touched the center of your own sorrow. <sighs> wow. I just want to stop right there for a moment because I'm like, that's deep. I want to know if you touch the center of your own sorrow. And I know, like I said, we're all on this this journey of self-discovery and changing and growing and healing. And part of that healing is reaching the center of your own sorrow. What makes you sad? What is holding you back? What is what in your journey is is stifling you is it you is your mindset is it something in your past what is your center of your sorrow and then if you have been open by life's betrayals or have become shriveled and closed from fear of further pain and I know a lot of us have been shrived, you know, closed off because of pain and fear. Fear has stopped us from doing a lot of things. I know fear has held me back from doing a lot of things. It's taken me, the, I mean, I'm here by the grace of God doing the things that I do because I did not let fear drive me. Um, I had children that I needed to support and feed and, and take care of, so I could not allow fear 
to stop me from growing. So therefore, I do understand that. But um, that's something that you want to sit down and think about, right? At the center of your sorrow, if you have open, have been opened by life's betrayals, life betrays you. That's how we grow. Like I said, if, if, if you don't get betrayed, you don't learn that lesson, you don't learn how to come up, rise above it, then you don't know how to um, prevent it or navigate it should it happen again. It's one of those things that you have to go through it, understand it, live it, to um, make it through it, to be able to defend it, to defend yourself from it should it happen again. So before we take a pause, let me reiterate this. It doesn't interest me what planets are square in your moon. I want to know if you have touched the center of your so your own sorrow, if you have opened by life's betrayals, or have become shriveled and closed from fear of further pain. And how many of us have closed ourselves off, walled ourselves off because we are fear something, someone is going to hurt us. And therefore, we stop living. We stop living. So let's take a pause. This is another pause moment. We, you know, if ever, any one of y'all read David Goggins' uh, book, Can't Hurt Me, or he's his, his next book, um, Don't Give Me the Lion, what the name of it, I, I, I was listening to it um, a couple of months ago. But I read both his books. But if you've ever read his books, listen to his books, um, he has challenges, right? So this is these are not challenges. These are my pauses. So this is your pause moment. I want you to pause and really think about um, how you how you see yourself and how you see what you've been through. Have you been hurt and betrayed? And did that hurt and betrayal cause you to put up a wall because you feared? The, the pain that could happen again, right? So, again, that's your pause moment. Let me just take a drink, I'm sorry. And that's a drink of water. I'm not drinking alcohols. Even though it is six o'clock and it's okay if I was drinking of the spirits, but I'm not taking any of the spirits. <laughs> um, I am not, I am, I'm being fully present for this conversation right now because it is important. I feel like um, this self-discovery journey, someone needs to hear it because it was it was something that, it wasn't planned for me to talk about today, but it said to me that it needed to be said if someone needs to hear it. So um, <clears throat> this is what it is as we close out the month before the Christmas holiday and everyone goes in to their bubble. Okay, so um, I think I can get through one more, maybe two more sections. Like I said, it's a really big poem. But um, the next part of this is, okay, we had that pause moment. Now I hope you've all paused and answered those questions or thought about that phrase. So the next part is, I want to know if you can sit with pain, mine, or your own without moving to hide it or to fade it or to fix it hot damn hot damn okay and that's, that's freaking amen every day we are sitting here trying to fix I mean just today we were driving and we were trying to fix somebody else's problems that my husband and I were having a conversation about he's like maybe they can do this or maybe they you know maybe they should look here maybe they should go work here maybe they just need they just need to quit we were trying to really fix our friend's problems and our friend did not ask for our two cents which I'm glad it was just between the two of us we were just having a conversation but um this 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 phrase here just really brought it to the forefront of my mind it's like holy shit we were just doing this today so again I say I want to know if you can sit with pain right sit with pain um and it doesn't mean physical pain guys I mean and, and or maybe it could very well be physical pain um 
but just pain, physical, mental, whatever that pain is and how it persists. Can you, are you able to sit with it and let it be great? <laughs> All right, just, just, just be like, I got this pain, whatever it is, this mental pain, this mental anguish and sit with it. Whether it's your own pain or someone else's pain, because those of us who are empathic and I am an empathic soul, I tend to feel and take in other people's pain. It's really um, one of those things that's a gift and a curse. Um, but are you able to sit with the pain, yours or mine, without you trying to hide it? How many of us always want to mask our pain? They talked about wearing mask and, you know, all the time and how we're changing masks depending on where we are, but we always try to mask the pain, right? How and hide it with, or, or moving it away, right? So are you able to do that? Are you able to just face it, right? Own it. it, it this is what it is right here. Don't fade it, right? Because that's the next part. You don't, you can't hide it or fade it. It's, it's just, and fading it means medicating it. Medicating it is either with medication, alcohol, um, conversation, mental block, whatever. That's fading it, okay? And then um, all of us who are fixers and want to fix people's problems, and I know it's 99% of the time is women, but men are fixers as well. Um, okay. Sometimes we don't want to be fixed. Sometimes it can't be fixed, but we want to try to fix it. So this is where you really have to sit with you being a listener or a fixer. And that's, and that's one of the things that, um, I think we talked about this a few weeks ago that I, I, start to ask people when we have conversations and they call me and they start venting. I'm like, can I just pause for a minute? <laughs> There's my pause. Can we just pause for me? And I, I learned pause from Huey from the boondocks. Okay. Love Regina um, King in uh, the boondocks. She's awesome. But um, that whole pause is, is hilarious in the show, but it really works in life. So um, <clears throat> that pause for me right now, is I tell, I ask people, I'm going to take a pause for a moment. Do you just need me to listen to, to, uh, so you can vent or are you asking for advice or are you looking for solutions? Um, and then if they give me an answer to any, or do you need a hug? Shit. Sometimes you just need a hug, hug it out. Um, and that's okay, but it, it, if you're in person, because you can't, I mean, you can do virtual hugs. I don't know how well that works, but anyways. Um, yeah, so you ask that question, and then once your your individual gives you their response, then you can go on, because then now you know what position you're playing. Because we, we don't, you know, as fixers, it's, it's natural for us to hear somebody's problem and want to go out and fix it. Hear someone's pain and want to go fix it, help them hide it, help them fade it away and sometimes it's just just not possible and sometimes it just got to let it be and figure out how to weather that storm because the storm is coming regardless and how what your stance is going to be how you're going to handle it when it comes to get through it is totally up to you and nobody can change that but you Okay, so here's your pause. I want you to sit down and think about this. I'm going to reread this phrase. I want to know if you can sit with pain, mine or your own, without moving to hide it or fade it or fix it. Now, pause. If you need to write it down, um, I would like you to write it down. But like I said, again, I'm going to have the, the poem in the blog page of the website. So you can always go back to refer to the whole poem. But again, I told you I'm, I probably won't get through the whole poem today. Um, but yeah, so that's so that that's that piece, right? Now, <clears throat> excuse me. 
I, um, I didn't mean to clear my throat. I, I do apologize. Um, so here, here's here's this this next part um, for everyone. I want to know if you can be with joy, mine or your own. Okay. So remember, we said, can you sit with pain, either mine or your own? Now, here's a one that we as women deal with all the time. I want to know. If you can sit with joy, whether it be my joy or your own joy, if you can dance with wilderness, oh shoot, there I go, creating a word. If you can dance with wildness, okay, and let the ecstasy fill you to the tips of your fingers and toes without cautioning us to be careful, to be realistic to remember the limitations of being human. What the hell? I think I might just have to go through this whole poem because this this whole poem is like what are you what do what are we what are you saying? What do you say? What do what are we doing here? But I'm going to I'm going to see how much I can get through um because this this is just like ooh this is powerful stuff right here. All right. So I want to know if you can be with joy, whether mine or your own, and that's, again, something that we all struggle with, some of us, and y'all can sit here and say, no, I'm all for everybody winning, winning especially for my ladies, and no, that's bullshit, because um, we would be doing, we all would be doing a hell of a lot better if that was a true statement. We need to do better. We should be doing better at fixing each other's crowns, um, but I digress. Answer the question. I want to know if you can be with joy, mine or your own, if you can dance with the with wildness. How many of you just kind of went out there? You guys remember Friends and you know how Phoebe was running all crazy and it was embarrassing to um, Rachel and so she wouldn't run with her. But that's the freest moments forever because she didn't care what anyone think thought about her her movements her running she was just running and being free and the same thing with um what's that Seinfeld TV show Elaine her dancing the Elaine dance I, I, that that's about as wild as it can get right but she danced like nobody was watching and that was like just letting that ecstasy just fill you up. You just got, you just are excited from your fingertips to the tips of your toes to the top of your head. You just feel that ecstasy. Have you ever, ever been able to accept that, to feel that, to know what that feels like without, here's a big piece, because we're all so concerned about how other people see us and y'all can sit here and say, no, I don't care what anyone say. And I'm like, uh-uh. Because -uh. even in my true authentic self, I still am thinking about how other people view me. Because that's the way we grew up. We grew up, we, you don't leave your house with your, your bonnet on, your hair rollers on, your pajamas, your slippers. You, you got clean underwear on. And you make sure you, your skin is taken care of before you go out the, the street. Right? That's the way we all raised because we didn't want, we were taught that we are to be presentable at all times, no matter if we're going to the corner store to get a loaf of bread, all right? And even then, you get that loaf of bread, you better have a bag and a receipt coming out that store. And that's just the way it was. So you can't say that you you don't, you can't, you, that being that free, um, you're not still thinking about what others are saying or how others are seeing you, right? But um, this is asking you, have you ever had that moment or been able to be, you know, able to feel that ecstasy, dance with wildness, you know, be in the joy of your own or someone else's without being cautious, without saying, hey, we got to be careful. Don't laugh too hard. Don't look, don't praise them too much because then their head's going to get big or, you know, 
somebody else going to see it and they're, they're going to get jealous um, or stop someone from dreaming about something that you feel may be unrealistic or unattainable, but you want to hold them back. Now that don't make sense or that's not realistic. You can't be the next Elon Musk because you, 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 it, hey, if that person is manifesting to be the next Elon Musk, who are we to tell them that's unrealistic? Or to tell them to rem remember their, their limitations. People are good for that. People are good for that. And watch the people in your circle who don't show that joy or you, you don't feel genuine happiness from. And every time you have a new idea or a dream or something that you want to do, they're always pointing out the unrealistic um, nature of it or the limitations that you have or that can have and the world the world has for you um, or just the fact that you know what um, no you can't do cryo because you're human um, and you have limitations um, that understand is a scientific thing but you gotta think about these things right you're also indistracting some negativity and it can be seen as being negative. So therefore, take that pause right now and think about that and, and answer that right now for yourself. Have you been able to be happy for someone else, be happy for yourself? Have you been able to just dance with complete freedom and wildness and, and just let the ecstasy of that freedom fill you from the fingertips to your toes without feeling like you need to caution yourself to be careful of who's watching you, to be careful of the that you're being unrealistic by dancing in the street or know that you are limited. Answer that one. That's your, that's your next pause moment, people. That's your pause. So pause. And let us know. Write it down. Write it down. Okay. All right. So I know I said this was going to be the last one, but I don't know. This is a good poem. Um, wow. So this next one. It doesn't interest me if the story you are telling me is true. Hot damn word. <laughs> it doesn't interest me if that story you're telling me is true. Because at the end of the day, if you're sitting here and you think it enough to, to tell me a false story, that's hurting you more than it's hurting me. Right? It's hurting the other person. So if it, it doesn't matter to me if the story you're telling me is true or not. I want to know if you can be, if you, here's the thing. I want to know if you can disappoint another to be true to yourself. <sighs> what is happening today? This whole poem is just like been everything I've been thinking about these past weeks. Okay. So it doesn't interest me if the story you are telling me is true. That's just something I, it really doesn't. I'm not going to sit here and banter with you back and forth. I mean, I, I, I've left relationships and people will tell stories and I heard this about you. I'll say, yeah, okay. Well, I heard this about so-and-so. I, it, it, I, I couldn't, can't be bothered. That's whatever. Um, so yes, it doesn't interest me if that story is true. I want to know if you can disappoint another to be true to yourself. That is valuable because we're finding that right now to this day, while wow, we're all sitting here trying to be better ourselves. And I, I, I don't want to say trying to, cause we are doing it. So many of us are doing it. So a lot of us are being better, learning ourselves, fixing our child, uh, healing our childhood traumas and growing within ourselves. Um, and doing that, there is a level of disappointment that you have to someone else because you're being true to yourself and being true to yourself. You are going to disappoint somebody because now as we talked about boundaries and saying it's okay to say no and have self-care that is going to disappoint somebody because they're going to come to you and say hey can you let's just say lend me thirty dollars right and then you say no I can't that is a disappointment to somebody right but they know you always were the one lending them money whenever they came you never said no before why all of a sudden are you saying no now 
and it could be very well. I just don't have it. <laughs> and that's and that's okay. But it's not for us to explain. It just is what it is. No, I can't. You ask me a question. No, I can't. That's going to be a disappointment to somebody. And so are you going to be okay with being disappointing someone um, to be true to yourself? And here's the other part of this. If you can bear the accusations of betrayal and not portray your own soul. Hot. Oh my gosh, this is like, wow. If you can bear the accusations of betrayal and not betray your own soul. How many of us have betrayed our own souls because we didn't want to look like the bad guy, the enemy to other people. So we sever the ties of the limitations that we set and the standards that we set for ourselves and we go and back do what we said we weren't going to do because of the fear of betraying someone. You can sit down and you can pause and think about that one too. It's okay. Um, I want you to. I want you to take that moment and, and think about it. Okay. Um, and then here's the other piece of that. If you can be faithless and therefore trustworthy, if you can be faithless and therefore trustworthy, that's giving up your soul. We, we, we hold on to our faith. I'm not going to be faithless just so I can prove that I'm trustworthy to somebody. That's not going to happen because my God is what has been keeping me in my, my faith and my prayer to my spiritual entity is what's been my drive. And therefore, not bruh, I'm not going to dampen that blessing because I want to prove to you that I'm trustworthy. That's not how that works. So here we are. We're going to pause. I want to read that whole statement back to you so that you can have it. You can think about it and write down your moments. So here it is. It doesn't interest me if the story you are telling me is true. I want to know if you can disappoint another to be true to yourself. If you can bear the accusation of betrayal and not betray your own soul. If you can be faithless and therefore trustworthy. What in the Sam? There we go. There we go. I, I just, no. I, I can't. I, it's, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. So therefore, there we go. We're just going to let that one go. And you guys can answer that however you feel. That's your business. Um, but um, <clears throat> like I said, as Auntie Tab says, do as you will. That's your business. I'm going to move on. So the next part. I want to know if you can see beauty even when it is not pretty every day. And if you can source your own life from its presence, can you see beauty where there is none or where there, where others do not see it? Um, and if, if, if so, um, can it be a source for your life and your, and from its presence? Can, is, can it bring you joy? Can it bring you life? Can it sustain you? Can it be a part of you? Is that possible? How do you feel about that? That's the, that's real because I try to see the the it's the Pollyanna in me the good in everybody but you want to see the beauty in people as well and I share that I when I greet my fellow individuals I I say good morning beautiful good morning gorgeous good morning handsome aren't you look at that smile look at that grace look at whatever I find something in that person to show them that they are enough and I hope that that peace helps them through that day because I don't know what they're going through. I don't know um, who's done anything to harm them. And therefore, if I can be of grace to them and a blessing to them just by saying, good morning, how are you? Beautiful. Oh, I love your hair. Your nails look great. Your skin is beautiful. That smile, whatever. Why is it so hard to be kind to someone? I just don't get it. 
but anyways um so that's that that next piece i want to know if you can see beauty even when it is not pretty every day because we can't be pretty every day we can't i mean we can, some of us can but is it really your true beauty because beauty is not only what we see at face value beauty is what you hold within you as well and the most physically this you know distorted individual can be the most beautiful soul and we lose sight of that because we're so interested on the face value that they present and it's just you judging a book by its cover and that should never be we need to open that book and read what's inside before we judge and i promise you okay i promise this is the last one but this is a really good poem and i was like i just want to keep going and I might just read the whole thing just so that we can talk about it or and have it up anyway, just so you have it, just in case someone doesn't want to read the show notes and go to the page. I, I'll, I'll read the whole poem in its intent, entirety at the end of the show, which is coming up soon because um, I've been talking a lot. So the next thing, I want to know if you can live with failure, yours and mine, and still stand at the edge of the lake and shout to the silver of that moon, yes. <laughs> we, didn't we just talk about failure and how we overcome failure and how the master has failed more often than the student has tried? Can you live with failure? So many of us can't and we have lost so many people because they have a hard time living with failure. Um, and... I tell anyone who is contemplating suicide uh, that you're not failing yourself or anyone else, but if you decide to leave this place because at the end of the day it's your choice and it's not for us to say that you are being selfish by taking your life, it's your life, you do with your life as you so choose. But here's the thing. Um, do you know, can you live with failure? Is the failure so, so bad that it makes you want to leave this earth? And if so, why? That That's all I ask. And, and you don't have to answer me. Um, it, it's just one of those things that, that that would be my question. What about this failure makes you feel like you can't come back from it? Because to me, with everyone who has been successful unless they've had a silver spoon or trust fund to help build their businesses and grow and, and so forth, they've failed at something at some point to get to where they are. And I remind myself of that every day when something that I'm doing does not come to fruition the way I expect it to. And I say, you know what, this is a learning experience right now. This failure is teaching me something. What is it teaching me? It's teaching me maybe I need to slow down and rethink how I'm approaching something. It's teaching me maybe I need to reevaluate my goals and my outcomes. It's teaching me that I need to pay attention and be mindful of what, what I'm doing. What is it teaching me? It's teaching me something because you've had other successes in things. So why all of a sudden now, here at this moment, you're having this failure this pause what's causing you to pause what's going on in your mind what are you dealing with mentally physically that is triggering you to not be at your very best to achieve this goal and how is it if if this failure is a part of your journey what are you going to do so that this doesn't happen again that you don't have another failure and if you do have another failure you do the same thing why did i fail again what did I do wrong this time? Did you repeat the same thing you did the first time? Because then, hell, that's the sign of insanity. Right there, you're doing the same thing over again and, and, and expecting a different outcome. That's insane. All right? So, of course, you failed again. You just prove the theory that if you do the same thing that caused you to fail the first time and you do the same thing the second time, you're going to have a failure the second time now. Do it again. If this is your passion, this is your goal, this is what you want to do, then you try it again for a third, fourth, fifth time and see if you can change your outcome. Because if this is a part of your journey, then it needs to be done. Then you need to figure out what you need to do to be better. And that's what failure is. 
so that you can have your success and you can tell your story. Because as my mom says, this is your test to your testimony. You can't stand there and give a testimony if you have nothing that has tested you. Because test is the first part of testimony. Can I get an amen? Yay. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to close out the rest of this because I've been talking to you guys, honestly, for an hour. And as I said, this has been an amazing poem. Um, it's, it's, it's filled with so much great information that I just, I really, really wanted to really share a lot of it and talk about it. But I'll read the last part of it. Um, actually, you know what? I'll read it from the beginning just so that you can have it all because this is going to be the last thing I, I, I talk about. And like I said, I'll, I'll put the whole poem up there. But it's called The Invitation. It doesn't interest me what you do for a living. I want to know what you ache for and if you dare to dream of meeting your heart's longing. It doesn't interest me how old you are. I want to know if you will risk looking like a fool for love for your dream, for the adventure of being alive. It doesn't interest me what planets are square in your moon. I want to know if you have touched the center of your, sor your own sorrow, if you have been opened by life's betrayals, or have become shriveled and closed from fear and future pain, a further pain. I want to know if you can sit with pain, mine or your own, without moving to hide it or fade it or fix it. I want to know if you can be with joy, mine or your own, if you can dance with wildness and let the ecstasy fill you to the tips of your fingers and toes without cautioning us to be careful, to be realistic, to remember the limitations of being human. It doesn't interest me if the story you're telling me is true. I want to know if you can disappoint another to be true to yourself. If you can bear the accusation of betrayal and not betray your own soul. If you can be faithless and therefore trustworthy. I want to know if you can, be, can see beauty even when it's not pretty every day. And if you can source your own life from its presence. I want to know if you can live with failure, yours or mine, and still stand at the edge of the lake and shout the sil to the silver moon, yes. It doesn't interest me to know where you live or how much money you have. That's very true. I want to know if you can get up after the night of grief and despair, weary and bruised to the bone and do what needs to be done to feed the children. It doesn't interest me how or how, how you can, it doesn't interest me who you know. Hmm. Wow, because it doesn't, I don't care who you know. It doesn't interest me who you know or how you came to be here. I wanna know if you still stand in the center of the fire with me and not shrink back. Hello. Oh. It doesn't interest me where or what you... Mm. It doesn't interest me where or what or with whom you have studied. I don't care what school you went to, okay? I want to know what sustains you with from inside. When all else falls away, what sustains you inside? And last but not least, I want to know if you can be alone with yourself and if you truly like the company you keep in the empty moments. Wow. <laughs> I'm telling you, this, this, this poem right here by Orion Mountain Dreamer, it speaks volumes when it comes to self-discovery because it's, it, it forces you to really look at yourself, look at the things you do, look at the company you keep, look at the sisterhood you and brotherhood you've built and see if you need to make some changes. And change is good. 
And as we talked about in the poem, sometimes you want to disrupt some stuff and learn some things about yourself and know that you are going to make some people unhappy by setting your boundaries, by removing them, distancing yourself from them and saying no and taking self-care. And that's okay because this is your moment of self-discovery. This is your moment of growth and it's all, it's all about you and what you take. And so, um, it's all about who you surround yourself with and who's in your circle. So I, I challenge you to look at your circle. Are these people feeding your soul? Are you feeding their soul? Are you feeding their dreams? Are they feeding your dreams? Are you helping each other stand up? Are you fixing each other's crowns? Right? Are you are you feeding each other's, you know, uh, passions, drives, aches? Are you celebrating one another? We don't celebrate each other. Look at your circle. If your circle is small and it's got all these people that is do that that believes in you and you believe in them, then you got a tight circle. Build on that circle. But if you have a shaky foundation and you got people in your circle that you just need to say, Hey, I love you, but I'm gonna keep you at a distance, that's okay. I love you. I don't like where you are because I don't see growth. And that's one thing that I had to learn that I can see potential and growth in under other people, but if they don't see it in themselves, then it's keeping you down and it's stunting your growth. So you got to let them go and let them do what they need to do for them. Be there. I, I'm still your cheerleader. I support you from a distance. I'll throw you a bone every now and again, but believe you me, you're not in that tight circle because there's nothing you can do for me until you grow to feed me. And then once you grow, if you decide to grow and then we find a connection to come back into the circle, then maybe, but I'm not one to go backwards. So, and that's the truth with me. I don't go backwards. Um, I, I, I love people for who they are and I appreciate them for who they are. And um, if, I released you from my circle. Uh, that's where you shall stay. I, I like I said, I'll be your cheerleader. I'm like, yeah, they, you, whatever. If I believe in what you're doing, I will support you. But at the end of the day, I can't let you back in my circle. I'm not there yet. I'm still working on me, guys. I'm still working on me. God's not done with me yet. I'm still working progress. So. If y'all don't agree with that, I, I can understand that because sometimes we don't agree with each other, but I still love you. And, you know, I hope you still got some love for me um, and we just move on from there. Right. So um, with that, I'm going to just let you guys go um, because I kept you long enough and I'm already behind on, on today's show because we had some mishaps, but it's OK. And uh, I just love you. Thank you, WUBI family. Thank you, WUBI listeners. Thank you so much for all that you have brought into my life. You've been a blessing for this coming year. I know I am new to the family. I'm still learning some things. Um, come the next season, I'm hoping to bring a, a, some new freshness to what it is that I'm doing. So for now, I'm going to say Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa. Um, Feliz Navidad, all the holidays, happy holidays to everyone. I, I, I just don't want to miss anyone out. Um, those are the holidays that I, I can think of right now. So just want to say happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa. And I wish everyone peace, love, and joy in the coming new year. May you have prosperity, stay strong, embrace the light in the dark that's within you and remember that regardless of anything or anyone any per, anything anyone's perception of you your perception is the one that matters the most and how you see you and how you present yourself and I hope and pray that you are always walking in your authenticity as you present yourself in the world so thank you to my sponsors divine nubian essentials um if you guys haven't tried their product again please give them a try um I, it, the product is amazing and we do ship all over the world so if there's anyone 
um, or no, somebody, oh my gosh, I, and I don't, again, I digress. Somebody from Canada ordered and someone from, <laughs> someone from Africa wanted to do a big order and I, I was kind of uh, on the fence about that, but we're, we're going to do that and see where it goes. And if it's a loss, I just count it as a loss in the prayer. But, um, so yeah, so there, there, there's, uh, future in that so thank you divine nubian essentials.com if you have not tried divine nubian essentials.com for both our men and women um i i suggest that you um give us a shot i would say you can't say you don't like something unless you tried it so i would say try it and if you don't like it then we're not for you then that's okay i'm okay with that um and then to collins education resource management so collins erm.com for our, our needs, for our students, for anyone who needs speaking engagements about health care, health and wellness, mental health and wellness, physical health and wellness, um, any students who need uh, anyone to speak on their behalf and help them with their health care needs and education, health care education needs, we are here for you at collinserm.com. And again, thank you, WUBI live if you have not downloaded the app please do it's on apple um google play you name it it's there the app is up and running and if you have not we're on roku as well so definitely chime in on roku and also wubi dot live if you want to chime in on the internet we are there as well. So with that, I want to say continue to take care of yourself and each other. And I just wish you nothing but love and peace and prosperity and good health and wellness and mental stability in this coming new year and many more. So with that, I bid you guys all adieu. And again, I will have the poem up for you all as well. But I read the whole thing at the end. But Take care of yourself and each other and check out the blog. I'll put it up on the blog as well. So with that, I will say namaste, people, and happy holidays. And I can't wait to tell you and show you what we have coming up in the new year. Namaste.